Hello, I am Shola Maik Agbuola, the director of Evom Films Incorporated. I manage Evom Channel on YouTube. I'm glad you're watching this. Evom Channel is dedicated to uploading highly inspiring original videos ranging from movies, musicals, teachings, talk shows, live events, conferences, and more. I urge you, click the subscribe button and click the notification bell to enable you to receive notices of fresh uploads on this channel. What else? Encourage your loved ones to do the same. Welcome on board. Thank you very much and God bless you. Brother Edward, um, I invited uh, both of you here for this brief meeting to acknowledge your loyalty and faithfulness to God's service in this church over the years. Oh, Pastor Kennedy, Sir. your labor in the Sunday school and the discipleship department has seriously led to the spiritual growth of our members. And uh, Brother Edward, even the blind can see that uh, the music department of this church has never remained the same since you took over the leadership of the choir. The contributions of both of you to the evangelistic trust of this mission is worth commending. Um, in view of this and in appreciation of your dedication and commitment, the church has decided to sponsor both of you on an all expense paid pilgrimage to Israel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, you see, this is to encourage you and to give you the opportunity to see firsthand some of the things you have been reading in your Bible. Mm. And then uh, most importantly, we believe that this trip will boost your spiritual growth. Um, actually, uh, you are the first uh, beneficiaries of this uh, gesture. God helping the church. Uh, we plan to extend the same to other committed members of the church in the future. <sighs> Thank you, Daddy. All thanks to God. To Him be the glory. Uh, we pray that God will continue to bless His work in your hands. Amen. We also pray that God will give us the grace to serve Him more. Amen. 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 Um, I have asked the administrative officer of the church, uh, Pastor Oladili, to link up with uh, your feet fly. Uh, that reputable travel agency to uh, register and uh, coordinate the arrangements for the next trip to Israel. Uh, so he's going to be getting in touch with you. Endeavor to cooperate with him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Glory be to God. Thank you, sir. Glory. Um, let's, let's have a word of prayer together. Father, in the name of Jesus. And all expense paid pilgrimage to Israel. My God, is this what I really need now? The pastor even said, the church is doing it because of my dedication and commitment. But I'm sure God does not see any dedication and commitment in me. Otherwise, God will not allow my life to be like this. After 18 years of active service in God's vineyard, my testimony has not changed one bit. The only things that are changing in my life are my age and my height. 
My life is the perfect definition of backwardness, redundancy, and frustration. At this age, I am not in any relationship, not to talk of getting married. I don't have any tangible job. I can't afford to hire an accommodation. I'm still living in a house rented for me by the church. What kind of life is this? And to think my pastor thinks I am dedicated and committed makes the whole thing more confusing. For God's sake, what is the essence of commitment without development? What is the use of dedication without promotion? Now, what is the use of going to Israel to see where the Lord walked when the Lord has refused to walk in my life? I've made up my mind. I'm not going on that trip. Rather stay back home and find something better to do with my life. What do you mean? Pastor, what I just said. Why? Ah. Pastor, you mean you didn't hear all I said? Oh, of course I did. I'm only surprised that you are rejecting the pastor's gift. Which gift? I deserved something better than the gift of a sponsored trip to history. Ah. But the church and our pastor, they have been doing their best to help the people that are in need, especially the church workers. Yes, I cannot deny the fact that daddy has been trying for me. But for how long will I continue to belong in the category of the needy in the church? Eh? For how long will I continue to depend on the tokens and handouts from church members to survive. I deserve something better. Honestly, God has not been fair to me. Oh. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I'm just not happy. I see. So, your grouse is against God. You are protesting against God. No, I am not protesting against anybody. I am just making my mind know. Sir, you know me. You know me too well. I don't know how to pretend. I tell it the way it is. I can't be unhappy and pretend to be happy. I'm not excited about this trip. I am not going. No. You will not do that. We are going on this trip together. You know our pastor. He's not given to flimsiness and pettiness. He does things according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I believe God led him to send us on this trip. I believe it's for a divine purpose. Brother Edward, don't allow what is happening to you to blend your eyes from seeing what is happening in you. Don't allow what you are passing through to stop you from getting to where you are going to. Where you are now is just a station on the way to your destination. But Edward, it is well with you. Thank you, sir. Hey, Edibobo, Edward Omo, congratulations. For what? Ah, finally, you are coming over to Europe. Macaulay, I never said I was traveling to Europe. I said my pastor is sponsoring me and another member of the church on a pilgrimage to Israel. Omo, I had you. That was why I said congratulations. And that was why I said for what? What am I going to do in Israel? Ah, ah. Eh? Eh, eh, go around and see biblical sites? 
why my own life is out of sight. He said, I am not interested. No, you must be interested. In fact, you are interested. What are you talking about? Have you forgotten the way I landed in Europe about nine years ago? Have you forgotten? <laughs> of course not. You smuggled your way there as an illegal immigrant through an illegal route. My brother, forget about the illegality. Eh? The fact is that now I am in Europe. See, the fact is that somehow, somehow, I have now been able to regularize my papers. And here am I doing fine in Europe. What are you talking about? Congrats. Thank you. You are the next to be congratulated. That is, if you are ready to do the needful. What? Hey, hey. Good question. Now you are talking. Now, just travel with them to Israel. When you get there, we will work out how you will find your way and cross over to Europe. Very simple. How? Through an illegal route? Well, 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 baby, baby. Uh, but you see, Edward, forget about the illegality. Eh? Forget about the illegality, my brother. When we get to the bridge, we will cross it. Hmm. Macaulay. You are suggesting that I should have scorn? That's illegal. Sorry. I'm born again. I'm a Christian. Christianity forbids illegality. <laughs> Edward. Edward, you must be you must be a comedian. In fact, you are a comedian. What are you talking about? Huh? How has Christianity delivered you from poverty and stagnancy? What are you talking about? Hello? 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 Edward, you did not answer my question.
Hello. Edibobo. Hello, my colleague. Ah. I can see you are now in uh, Israel. Yeah. We arrived late last night. Very good. Very good. I didn't call you because I knew it would be around uh, midnight where you are. Yeah, very good. You are welcome to the first leg of your transition from hopelessness to greatness. <laughs> um, I have perfected plans with the agent who is going to help you to cross over to Europe. Everything is settled. Oh, how soon will that be? Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> you know we have just a few days to spend here. Oh, very soon. Very soon. Just make sure you mix very well with the pilgrims. Okay? Okay. Don't allow anyone to know that you are up to something. Is that okay? Okay. Good. I will keep updating you as the plans unfold. Good. Bye for now. Bye. Pastor okay. King, good morning. Good morning, Brother Edward. The morning devotion has started. I know. You do? Yes. I came to check on you when I didn't see you there. I'm sorry, Pastor. I don't feel like attending. <laughs> well, Brother Edward, I understand what is going on. But you don't give the devil a chance. Don't allow how you feel to stop you from doing the right thing. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hmm? I encourage you to go in there, brush it up, pick your Bible, and let's go. Edward, I'm still waiting. Congratulate your neighbor. Say, Welcome to Jerusalem. Aha, aha. Say, Welcome to Jerusalem. This short charge 
It's titled, Why Are We Here? Why are you here? Let's quickly take the scriptures. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, uh -huh. and unto the city of the living God, mm -hmm. the heavenly Jerusalem, yes. and to an immovable company, company of, of angels. Thank you. Hallelujah. Beloved, there is a heavenly Jerusalem, and there is a Jerusalem here on earth. And we are all here gathered in this earthly Jerusalem. We have come to step on all the places our Lord Jesus stepped on. We have come to have contact with the living world. We have come to see all the sights where great and mighty miracles were wrought, not only by our Lord Jesus Christ, but the great prophet that we've read about in the scriptures. We have come to see this scripture come to life. We have come to hold the scriptures, to experience it. We have come to contact with power of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have come so that our spiritual life can be set ablaze for God. We have come so that our life can be impacted positively. We have come for a transformation in our spiritual life. We have not come for sightseeing. No. We have not just come to make friends. We have come to touch the word of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you excited that you are in Jerusalem? Yes. If you go back to share of the goodness of the Lord, we can say, yes, the tomb is empty. The Lord is risen. He is not dead. And so we have a hope of life. Now someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. So, beloved, I want you to pray for yourself. That, Father, I have come. I will not return home the same. You say, Father, I have not come only for sightseeing. I have not come to accompany people here. Pray that the word of God, as you continue to read, we have deep understanding and meaning to your life. Pray that the spirit of revelation of the knowledge of the word of God will come mightily into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you praying for yourself? Say thank you Jesus for this privilege because your word will no longer be strange to me. We have true understanding by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Have you prayed for yourself? Henceforth you are a new being because you have come in contact with the power of the Lord. I will be part of those in the heaven in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. just had the privilege of visiting the tomb where our Lord Jesus Christ was buried. And then the fact remains that our Lord Jesus Christ is no longer in the tomb. We saw the tomb 
empty. Oh, let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, you remember in Luke 23, 56, that Mary Magdalene and the other women prepared ointment and spices according to the Jewish burial custom. But on the Sabbath day, they rested, again according to the Jewish commandment. But early on Sunday morning, they went to the tomb. What were they there for? On the mission of love, to anoint the body of our master. Behold, he was no longer there. And our Lord Jesus is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Is somebody excited about this? If you are, shout a bigger hallelujah. But then, this is the truth. Our Lord submitted his will. He submitted and sacrificed all for mankind. Why did he do this? He did this so that we can have the privilege of equally belonging to him. Beloved brethren, you remember in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, the Bible says, If the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will with the same spirit raise you from the dead and quicken your mortal body. This goes to show, beloved, that the same power that raised a dead man from the dead is more than powerful, is more than available, is equally powerful by the instrumentality of the Holy, of the, of the Holy Spirit, just like a dynamo, and is there to raise us from any dead or dying situation. Is it a dead passion for God? Is it a dead marriage, a dying health? Is it a dying glory or a dying hope of a glorious future? What is that thing that God cannot bring back to life? Nothing. Whatever it is that is dead or dying, He can bring back to life. I want us to key into the power that raised Jesus from the dead today. As you go before God now and begin to pray for yourself. Now, Father, let the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, let it raise me. Let it raise me. Lift up your voices and pray. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the resurrection power. Yes. Oh, bless you. Thank you, brother. God bless you. God bless you the way you are praying. Put your mouth and pray. Yes, brother. God bless you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory. Brother Edward, what are you doing here all alone? What happened? What happened? Sir, it is the same spirit. Same spirit? Same spirit? What is that? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead has raised me. The value of discouragement. Pastor, sir, my heart is flooded with indescribable joy. I can't explain it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm happy to hear this. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, my. Thank you, sir. I can't explain the joy. <laughs> I had an unusual encounter with my savior this afternoon. Your savior? Who? The Lord Jesus. Oh, that? Well, I called because I've not heard from you concerning the matter. You will never hear from me concerning the matter again. Ah. Edward. What do you mean? You are not interested in coming to Europe again? <laughs> I said I had an encounter with my savior this afternoon. You've said that before and I heard you. <laughs> I am repeating it again. Because the encounter was not just an unusual one, but life-changing. It has changed my mindset. All the things I've been seeing with my dear eyes since I came to Israel 
I've been deepening my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been walking the very place my Lord Jesus Christ walked over 2,000 years ago. Edward, what is it? Are you normal? <laughs> no, I'm not. You cannot encounter Jesus and be normal. You ask Saul, the persecutor, who later became Paul, the apostle. You cannot encounter the power of the Holy Spirit and remain normal. Ask Peter before the Pentecost. And Peter after the Pentecost. The encounter that completely changed my mind came to a climax when I saw the empty tomb where my Lord Jesus lay. The power of God came upon me afresh. My brother, indeed, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is able to raise anyone who allows Edward you are preaching to me. No, I'm simply telling you the reality of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Macaulay, I need you to be a Christian, a fervent one at that, until you allow the spirit of desperation to push you into traveling out of Nigeria by a crooked means. My dear brother, please allow the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead to restore you back to your place in Christ. Uh, thank you, brother Edward. Thank you. Thanks to God. Hallelujah. Ah, I am so happy to hear this wonderful testimony. You see, uh, divine encounters are not limited by geographical locations. Hmm. God can encounter anyone, anywhere, and at any time. Brother Edwards, yes, sir. I congratulate you on this wonderful divine encounter that led to your restoration in the Holy Land of Israel. I pray that God will give you the grace to remain true to him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. We praise God. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Pastor Kennedy, sir, thanks for being a wonderful source of encouragement mm -hmm. to Brother Edward. The fact that you did not let go eh, when the devil was trying to snatch Brother Edward played an important part in the restoration of our dear brother. Mm. I pray that the Lord will reward your labor of love. Amen. 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 We thank God, sir. <laughs> brother Edward, you led a very powerful session of worship on the last night of your stay in Israel. <laughs> yes, sir. Ha. It was powerful. Very powerful. Ah, <laughs> Sir, <laughs> Very powerful. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, mommy and I watched the live stream online. Sir, I have seen Brother Edward led worship several times here in church, but I had never seen him ministering in such a manner. It was awesome. Sir, the grace of God that came upon him that, that night was something else. He literally carried every one of us to heaven. No one Christians received fresh fire. Some people were filled with the Holy Ghost. Sir, many of us were so being like babies. Diverse illness and deliverances happened. Sir, it was simply awesome. To how be the glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know Engineer Fidelis, a member of our church. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
he said he also watched the live streaming of this program on his phone in a hotel room in far away Australia. He is currently in Australia on business matters. He said he was richly blessed by the uh, session of worship. Hmm. He called me right after the program. He told me God spoke to him expressly. He said God told him to hold you by the hand and with you. Hmm. Yes, he said that she'll give you the permission to see him. He immediately returns from his trip on Friday. Oh, that should be tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, he said God led him to give you a very huge amount of money to establish the business of your choice. Oh, Jesus God. Daddy. <laughs> in addition to that, he said his first daughter, who is based in Canada, will be getting married in England towards the end of the year. He wants you to minister a song at the program. He wants you to travel with the family for the program. Uh, and he wants to know if you'll be willing to honor the invitation. Hey! 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 Hey, brother, I, go God, sir. I know you want to pray to God on this matter. Please go ahead and seek the face of God. Ah, <laughs> daddy. Meanwhile, Engineer Fidelis asked me to give you his number so that you can speak directly. Yes, um, zero. It's zero. <laughs> From the master, my life has changed. I've been transformed. Just one touch from the master, my life has changed. I've been transformed.